When he's not being the CEO of Gearbox Software, Randy Pitchford prides himself on being a real-life magician. Well, if the whole magic career doesn't pan out, it seems like he could have a very long run as a fucking clown. The often controversial, rarely honest CEO has been a one-man shit circus as of late. Social media has never been a friend to this executive, mostly because he keeps getting into slanging matches on there and he keeps getting put in his place. The latest controversy this weird man has mired himself in involves a cat and a crab. There is a video of a crab going after a cat in what looks like a very contrived situation that many consider to be animal abuse, and it makes absolute sense why you would consider it animal abuse if you put a crab and a cat together and film it with the expectation there will be a funny video when they inevitably get into an altercation. That's pretty damn abusive, especially when you consider what a goddamn crab can be capable of. Because I don't know if you know this about crabs, it's a little known fact, but crabs have fuck off sharp claws. Claws that to a cat, which again, here's a, here's a little animal fact for you, an obscure fact. Cats are smaller than people, so crabs, comparatively, are way bigger to a cat than they are to us. And did I mention the big fuck off claws? The crab does indeed pinch the the cat. Now, I've not seen that bit because, frankly, I don't want to see a cat getting fucking hurt. That's not entertainment to me, but then I'm not a CEO. But it was certainly alarming enough that the Twitter account that first posted the video was deactivated by Twitter. It got suspended. Now, think about that for a moment. Twitter, in this situation, has higher standards than Randy Pitchford. Twitter the website version of someone squatting over a puddle of piss and farting on it. That has higher standards! Those on my timeline who were unfortunate enough to see the video were quite disturbed by it. They didn't want to see that in their bloody feeds. And some people have tried to write this off as, uh, they're saying, oh, well, you're just being sensitive about it. Uh, someone asked me when I talked about it on Twitter, they said, haven't you ever seen National Geographic? Yes, I have, and I've never seen a crab and a cat put together so that they can fight. Perhaps the most remarkable thing to me is Randy Pitchford's attempt to justify what he did. His weird, waffling, rambling justification resembles those used by YouTube prank channels, the, the, the channels that claim to be pulling practical jokes on people, but are just doing really cruel things, like going into Walmart and telling people who work there that they're fired, or going up to people of colour and just being fucking racist to them. He seems to actually be trying to pull the old it's a social experiment move. I tend to favour curiosity and disfavour setting up a feeling and empathetic creature for discomfort. Yet among the negative reactions I felt watching this, there's also some other stuff that isn't exactly negative. This makes me curious about how other people react. Right, well Randy, is your curiosity satisfied? because everyone certainly fucking reacted. This absolute waffle became on Twitter what is known as ratioed, where the replies far outweighed the retweets and the likes, which tends to suggest that someone's getting a ton of shit for something that pissed everyone off, which is what this did. There were some people defending him, of course, the devil always has advocates, but most people were quite rightly disgusted at what this man deemed entertaining. This is the latest in a long line of farcically boneheaded controversies this glorified court jester has found himself in. His downright strange indiscretions go back years, but just the ones concerning Borderlands 3, just the ones from this year, have been absolutely bizarre. There was, of course, that moment where he said microtransaction nonsense wouldn't be in Borderlands 3 and when Game Informer corrected the statement and mentioned the monetization that would be there, he went off the deep end and started accusing them of trying to fuck him. He was trying to fuck on me! He claimed Troy Baker turned down the opportunity to reprise his role as Reese for Borderlands 3, a claim that Troy Baker said simply isn't true, and he poked fun at Randy Pitchford telling him he needs to check his facts. And then of course there's that notorious 
glorious back and forth that Randy Pitchford had with David Eddings, the former voice actor for Claptrap, and that was a back and forth that ended with David Eddings describing how Randy Pitchford once physically assaulted him in a hotel lobby. And that's just the stuff related to Borderlands 3. If you want a rundown of some of his other greatest shits, then you can have a look at the Jimquisition I did, titled Randy Pitchford is Poison, a headline that only ever seems to get more true with time. For indeed it was only two weeks ago where I said Randy Pitchford needs to just stick to promoting his games on Twitter, just give out shift codes, because whenever he tries to branch out, he causes trouble, and here we are again, and he's causing trouble for himself and for Gearbox as a whole. When it comes to video game marketing, Randy Pitchford has one of the easier jobs out there. He's got to promote Borderlands 3, and that's a game that practically sells itself. I mean, for God's sake, everyone was dreading it would chase the live service gravy train and start sequestering its loot behind paywalls. There was quite a lot of rightly justified fear about Borderlands 3 going down that route, considering the publisher is 2K Games, and 2K Games fully embraces abusive monetization. In stating that the very heart of the game, the loot, would not be paywalled, Randy Pitchford had an open goal. It was the easiest win in the world, and yet he still somehow turned around and scored an own goal. And it's all he's been doing throughout the promotion of Borderlands 3 ever since. It's incredible. A miracle, you guys. A miracle. You know, it almost makes me feel sad for the marketing team for Fallout 76. They actually had a tough job. They were trying to convince people that Fallout 76 wasn't garbage, something that people didn't want to believe even a year before it came out. I would argue in a deliberately roundabout and cheeky way that Randy Pitchford is an insult to Fallout 76's marketing team. They had a really difficult job. They did their best to try and sell us on Fallout 76. Randy Pitchford, comparatively, has the easiest job in the world, sell us on Borderlands 3. Most people are already sold, and yet he he keeps making case after case against the game by being a wanton dickhead. Randy Pitchford, of course, once famously accused me of having a hard-on for him, uh, but, you know, saying that I go after him at any given opportunity, and there is some truth to that. I mean, I don't literally have an erect phallus for the man, but considering I report on bad behaviour in the game industry, and considering he is nothing but bad behaviour, the guy's a walking gimme. I don't want to keep having video after video about Randy Pitchford, but he's a CEO. He is the head of a popular, world-renowned video game studio. The man has a responsibility to his company, to his brand, and he doesn't take it seriously. Any stories you hear about him behind the scenes reinforce this idea of an immature, infantile man who does not appreciate the gravity of his role. If he keeps showing his ass, he's gonna keep getting a spotlight shone on him because, again, he's a CEO. Just... What is wrong with him? What the hell is wrong with him? I swear to God, I act more professional than he does, and I sometimes wear a rubber bird skull and fuck pogs on camera. Meanwhile, his entire run as CEO as of late just seems to be one giant wet fucked pog.